I smelt this and I finally understood the mysteries of the universe. Hey loves, it's a back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're discussing my winter favorites. I'm sharing all the things I love for this time of year with you. We're going from home fragrances. There's no beauty, which is shocking. I used to be the type of person who was heavy into limited edition this and that and palettes, but I just got skincare and a whole bunch of other stuff to share. I told myself, just pick 10 things, but there's a lot more than 10 things over here, let me tell you, so let's get into it. Okay, so boom, what should we start with first? Cause there's a lot. Let's start off with fragrances cause I got a few to share with you. The first one is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Gone Bad Supreme or Intense. It's one of those things. Whenever they have an intense version, just know your girl's gonna pick Intense because there's a reason. It just means that the original is not doing what it's supposed to. And I love a good intense fragrance because one spritz is all you need. Trust me, when it comes to Killian fragrances, one spritz is gonna last you a week. Sometimes I'm scrubbing my body and I can still smell it when I go to sleep. This scent is so beautiful. I also spray my clothes. Although it's intense, it's still not enough for it to just stay on the skin all day. Just gotta let you know. But it smells so sophisticated, so sexy and sensual. It's just everything to me. I love this scent so much. I don't like the packaging, I can't lie. It gives gimmicky to me, but if you like it, I love it. It always topples over where I keep my perfume collection, so it's kind of annoying. And because I'm legally blind, I forget which side I'm supposed to press because I can't see it. So sometimes I'm like trying to press where the nozzle is, but that's just a me thing. Mm. Mm, I just, I don't know what it is about this fragrance because I have a lot that have the similar notes of like tonka bean, but something about this really sets it apart and it's perfect for these colder days. And this next fragrance is a classic. I missed out on it over the years because I just figured it was your grandma's type of scent. It's YSL Libra and trust me, it is far from it. You know, certain fragrances, like when I think of Coco Chanel, I'm like, yeah, that's definitely giving grandma. This one, when you smell it, yes, it does give a more mature scent, whereas the Carolina Herrera is sophisticated but still playful with it. But what's beautiful about this fragrance is the way that the levels lift over time. It really smells distinct on you. I know a lot of people who wear this fragrance and it smells different on every single person. Call it the sisterhood of traveling perfumes. This is something that I think is perfect for a gift and I think Sephora has 20% off now because I ordered some things. So by the time I post this, it should still be on. So if you wanna grab it, give it a try. Get a little discount at the same time. If you know me, I could just do a video on fragrances alone, but we're gonna stop at three. This is Killian's Angel Share. I made the mistake last year of getting the travel spray. I figured, you know what, since this is such a fall winter scent, I'll probably have it until next year. But the only reason why I haven't finished it is because I've restricted myself. I actually placed an order for a full size. I caved in, because that price tag was looking back at me like, are you sure, girl? Are you sure? This is one of those fragrances that smells potent, but lifts really fast. So I spray my clothes so that it lasts. It is a boozy apple pie, which is why I think it's perfect for winter time. Again, it's very sensual, sophisticated, sexy. All of the S's, all of them. It just smells so scrumdiddly umptious. <laughs> ah, Killian Dunn did it again. This is a very close contender to my all time favorite, which is Killian's Rolling in Love. If you know that one, the almond milk and tonka bean in that one, unmatched. From fragrances to home fragrances, this candle. It's an apothic candle. I ordered it through Anthropology. I think they have their own website, but if you go through Anthropology, they have a huge discount on this. You don't wanna know how much this is original price, so definitely get it on discount. It's white vetiver, and the only way I can describe this is hotel lobby, somewhere real bougie. Like if Rich had a scent, it'd be this candle because that's what it is. It literally smells like expenses, debits and credits. I don't know how else to explain it, and it's also very subtle. When it first burns, you're like, where's the scent? Hello, this candle is not cheap. It needs to be more aromatic. But give it half an hour and trust me, your place is gonna smell like you transported to a place you have no business being because your bank balance is gonna be looking back at you like, you think you rich, rich? You know, social media has made us feel like we're more rich than we are. Yeah, that's the scandal. We all have that candle that we try not to burn because just lifting the lid, you get the aroma in your place, but I promised myself this season I have to burn it because that's the whole reason why I bought it. It's spiced eggnog. 
It smells delicious. When I first got it, I was like, mmm. It's giving cinnamon roll, and they have one from the same line from Anthropology that is cinnamon roll. I'm glad I went in the store and smelled them both. Cinnamon roll is cinnamon roll, no doubt, whereas this is cinnamon nutmeggy. It's got like a creamy vanilla. It's a little more complex, which is why I think it's worth the price, because hello, whenever I smell a cinnamon candle, I think Bath & Body Works on discount. I don't know what it is, but I want something that's gonna give more dimension and depth when I'm spending this much for a candle. Eventually, I will cave in and finally burn it and I'll probably put in this week's vlog. What's next? If you've been on my channel for a minute, you already know, the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. The reason why I chose this is especially during the winter months, I find some of the other face washes that I have in my rotation dry out the skin. I'm acne prone with wrinkles at the same time. My skin needs to pick a demographic. Point of the story is, I need something that's gonna be soft, but get in there and take out the oil impurities without stripping the skin, and this fits the bill. It even takes off your eye makeup, so if you're lazy like me and you wanna do everything in one go, this is your pick. I'm sharing a lot of throwbacks with you guys in this one. This is the Dr. Dennis Growth Ferulic and Retinol Acid. This will change your life. I've been buying this for what, four or five years, and I don't know if the whole your skin gets used to it thing is true, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do as much, if that makes sense. When I first used this, compliments on compliments on compliments, everyone could see that my skin was far more smooth and radiant than ever before. I swear it's the retinol, but the ferulic acid is really good for that too. I'm gonna try something from a dermatologist in the next coming weeks, so stay tuned for how that works. I find the more pale I get when I get to my winter shade as opposed to having that nice tan in the summer, I need to pull this out more, but maybe the acne blemishes are really blemishing and I need something more potent than this. But if you're new to it, not true to this, give this a try because the first time you use this, unpair. If your lips need a little love, try Summer Friday's Lip Butter. This balm, best on the market. And I'm embarrassed to admit how many I've tried from Sephora and none of them hit the way this one does. This is, first of all, they have a honey beige color, which is like the perfect neutral if you're my complexion, lighter or darker. And they also have two other shades. This is just the original one because I ran out of the other one. This is the most creamy yet glossy balm on the market and it actually moisturizes. I'm the type of person, I may not see well, but I will take the rest of the vision I have left and Google and see what the ingredients are. And a lot of times they be playing with us because what they'll do is they'll put ingredients in the product that dries the lips out at the same time. There's gotta be a law against that. Whereas with Summer Fridays, everything in this is meant to leave your lips soft, supple, and kissable. If as soon as it gets a little cold, you get ashy layer on level high like me, Fenty Beauty Butter Drop Limited Edition. I don't like the original. I don't like the packaging, even though I love purple. I just, I'm so picky about my purple. So when they dropped this cream colored container, I said, you know what? I've been needing to buy a butter drop and I'm so happy I got this one. The formulation is different. It's got a soft gold shimmer, which is such a nice luster. You know, some winter days, even though it's cold outside, it's sunny. You wanna look at your skin and see a nice little luster like you got some sun somewhere, right? It smells like cinnamon sugar goodness. The cinnamon's not overpowering like a Valentine's cinnamon heart candy, you know what I mean? It's very creamy. It's almost like a vanilla cinnamon roll type of scent. It just smells so delicious. And I love that the consistency is not as greasy as the original. I kept trying because everyone's been swearing about the butter drop and I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. I'm very picky. For someone who's so ashy, I shouldn't be so picky about how emollient something is, but I am. And I like that they found like the Goldilocks with this and that it's beautiful packaging. If you have a diffuser, you need these diffuser oils. If you don't have a diffuser, you need to get one. I swear it's the perfect way to set a mood. It elevates your place to a whole nother level. I have two diffuser blends I wanna share with you. The first is chai and you need to give it a try. I'm saying this as someone who hated chai up until last year, but something flipped to switch. I don't know what it was, but all I do know is that I'm obsessed and this literally smells like a chai latte, but like a legit one like a masala one. It's very, 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 very decadent, 
You don't need as many drops as you would with a regular sage blend, which is usually 10 to 12. I usually put six, I'm set. It smells so good. It's really giving fall winter vibes and I'm here for it. The next one is Ginger Snap and I think this one is also limited edition. It's green, so I'm assuming it's only here for Christmas time. If you love ginger as much as me, this one is gonna be everything. I remember reading online a couple years ago about a fragrance that was invigorating but balancing. I'm like, where do they do that at? How can something be stimulating and soothing at the same time? I smelt this and I finally understood the mysteries of the universe. This, somehow it's calming and soothing like a cozy night in, but it's also invigorating because the ginger just you know what ginger smells like. It just takes things up a notch. I love ginger everything, coconut everything. So there's certain scents when I see it, I buy it no question. And this is one of them. So I have two curl products because I plan on wearing my hair. You know what? I might do 50-50. I've been wearing my hair curly a lot and I've been so proud of myself, but I do like a little sleek soap press. First product is this Kali Hari leave-in conditioner. I love it so much that I'm showing you an empty. I definitely need to buy some more this week. This is perhaps one of the best products that I've purchased in the last year. The reason why I love it is because it conditions so well. It smells like a tropical vacation and it leaves my curls super soft. I've been realizing lately that the more I leave my hair curly, the more brittle it gets. The water is really hard here. This is something that helps offset it. And if you've watched the vlogs, I've complained to you guys before that I've been shedding quite a bit. This hasn't really mitigated it, but I noticed when I use this, my hair doesn't tangle nearly as much, which kind of helps. Speaking of dry, definitely give this one a try as well. It's the Shea Moisture Restore Black Caster Leave-In Conditioner. I'm not really big on Shea Moisture, but they started sending me PR packages this year, and I'm hooked on this. Out of every product they sent me, this is something I'm gonna go out and repurchase. I put this on my scalp in my little problem area. I put it on my hair, especially on my ends, and the way my hair feels after using this, the only thing this is missing is I wish it could help with anti-frizz, but I have another product for that anyways. But if you're in the market for something that's gonna really hydrate your hair and it smells so good, this is your product. Here are two drink picks. I just, I know they're random, but I wanted to add them anyways, especially if you live in Toronto, get your hands on the second cup vanilla bean hot chocolate. Not the white hot chocolate, not the candy cane, not the regular, the vanilla bean. This one is exquisite. It's not too sweet. And the perfect thing about buying a container versus going to the cafe every day is one, you save more money, two, you can control how much is in there, and three, you get to make what you wanna make. Sometimes I wanna just do a straight up hot chocolate. Sometimes I wanna do it with water to be less, you know, cause sometimes doing milk is a little bit too decadent. Sometimes I wanna make it a latte. Sometimes I wanna make it ice. Sometimes I wanna put a little Baileys in there. It gives you the option when you have it on deck at home. For my coffee lovers, if you wanna get caffeinated, get you some spiced eggnog. This, First of all, the scent is it. The scent wakes me up. I'm a weirdo when it comes to coffee because I don't really like the taste, to be honest with you. And I don't like what it does because most of the times I get jittery, but when I have coffee, it's because I really need to wake up. I love the scent and I love making it. Everything else I'm kind of like, mm, it's here. But this smell of this, mmm. It's definitely Christmas. I love it so much. If you live in Toronto, definitely go and check it out. That store is huge. Imagine a store with just coffee and coffee things, but imagine it like the size of a Walmart. It doesn't even make sense. Okay, maybe it's not as big as a Walmart, but it's a lot bigger than you expect a coffee store to be. And I don't even go for coffee that hard. So for me to be like wandering and being so excited in there, lets you know how bougie this Bean Wise store is. Oh, it smells so good. It does taste good too. I like to put my milk with a little bit of coffee, if you know what I mean. I'm not big, I'm not a coffee addict in that way, but when I do need a caffeine kick versus matcha, this is my pick. Of course, you have to have something to sip it in. I have this Muji glass, and you can tell the glass aesthetic is definitely my vibe. There's another reason besides it being aesthetic. I like glass mugs because it reminds me to drink my tea. I'm all over the place during the day, so sometimes I'll make a cup of tea, forget to drink it for an hour because I'm so busy. When I see a glass cup in my space, it annoys me because I'm like, drink it or clean it. You're gonna sip or spill it. There's only two options. When I use my other mugs, I get distracted and I look in and I'm like, oh, I never drank that. And I don't wanna get into the habit of heating up my tea or drink again. So getting these glass mugs keeps me on track and it also reminds me, go get your glass cup and drink more water, girl. Speaking of, 
I'm the worst. When I film, I have my tea so I can sip if my mouth gets dry, whatever, and I forget it, and at the end, it's cold. Lastly, and definitely not least, this coat from Aritzia. Do you see the color? I have been looking for the perfect cream coat for a century. Okay, maybe not, but it's been more than 10 years. And I have tried, I've bought, I've returned, I haven't been able to find something that fits right, especially since lately, oversized has been a moment and oversized is not for me. Listen, I don't wanna be putting on clothes, feeling like a kid putting on my mom's coat. That's not my vibe. So I got this in the smallest size because it is supposed to be a little oversized and I wanted it to be more fitted and it's everything I wanted it to be. I know it's gonna be good quality because all of my friends who have Aritzia coats, different styles, have sworn by them. So this is something that I'll have for years. I don't know where I'm gonna wear this at. I call it a dress coat because it's literally gonna be a coat I wear with dresses. I might pair it one, two times with a neutral moment, but more often I wanna wear it on an event night when I'm wearing a dress just to pair it well, especially since that color is problematic. I have a darker coat that's way shorter and last week someone spilled wine on it. If you saw the vlog, you already know how that went. So I wanted to get a nice coat that I'll wear on very special occasions and good things come to those who wait. I've been for years saying, just cave in and buy the next thing that you see. And I'm like, no, just wait, just wait, just wait. Every year for more than 10 years and finally, Finally, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, comment down below if you've tried any of these before, what your favorite picks are. And as always, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.